welcome back to Butterfly Dreams Crochet and More. My name is Jeannie, and today it's Monday, y'all. That is right. I will do a video on Mondays called It's Monday, y'all, so it can be anything, any kind of content. But this video that we're going to get ready to do will be non-yarny questions challenge that I was challenged by Miss Cynthia. I was tagged in by Miss Cynthia from Cynthia's Joyful Creations. So come on in, grab a seat. It's 16 questions. It's just going to let you get to know me a little bit more. So stay tuned and I will be back. All right, y'all. We're here to answer 16 non-yarny questions about myself. So I'm going to do the best I can because some of these I'm not sure about. But we're going to put some kind of answer with them, all right? Mm. But before we get into all of that, come on in here and have a seat and see what kind of answers I give for these non-yarny questions. <laughs> Let's see. Number one. Besides yarn, is there anything you collect? Hmm. Hooks and books, y'all. I collect crochet hooks and I collect crochet books. Yes, I do. I may not never work out of that book, but I collect them. Number two, what is your most prized possession? I really don't have one. I'm not one to cherish things or say that, oh, this is my prized possession. You better not touch it or anything like that or nothing because, number one, I can't take anything with me when I leave this world. When God calls me home, I can't take anything with me. Um, If I had to say my most prized possession, which is not my possession, um... Because when something happens to me, it's going to go somewhere. And I can only hope that it stays within the family. Is my grandmother and mother's crochet hooks that I have. And my grandmother's sewing machine that I have. And her um, mother's ring. That is really the only thing that I have that I really value. Um... And like I said, I can only hope that it stays in the family when something does happen to me. Um, because I'm, I'm definitely going to leave this world one day. Number three. Name a book or movie that is important to you. The only book that I can think of would be my Crochet Stitch Dictionary books. I really, really... Love those books and they are important to me because they cause me to be more creative. It gets my creative juices flowing. Also, it allows me to expand my crochet skills and abilities um, in crochet. It allows me to create my own projects. It allows me to learn new stitches and different stuff like that. So, yeah, I would have to say my crochet stitch dictionary. And number four, in how many languages can you say thank you? English and gracias. Thank you. Number five, what is the most interesting place you have visit, visited? That one I'm going to have to say the National Voting Rights Museum in Lowndes County. It was very educational and very eye-opening, um, as well as heartbreaking. Also, the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis. That was in the museum there as well. That was very eye-opening and stuff like that. So, I would have to say those two places. Number six, are you a morning bird or a night owl? I'm a little bit of both because um, I stay up late 
And for the most part, I get up early. Some mornings I might go to bed 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm back up at 6, 7 o'clock. So if you consider that an early bird, then yeah. So I'm a little bit of both of those. Tell us about your animal family. Well, my current animals are Hershey, which is a chocolate lab. My four cats, which is Smokey, Snickers, Tigger, and Simba. And my newest addition, which is Miss Emily. And she is, she'll be 12 weeks old Wednesday. And she is part rat terrier and part poodle. Now, if you look up that mix, they have classified them as what's called a rattle. R-A-T-T-L-E. Um, we have had horses in the past. And um, I did have a chihuahua named Sandy. Most of y'all know who Sandy is. You can go back and watch my videos and see Sandy in them. Um, a lot of y'all know her as the dog that I stole from a neighbor, but I didn't steal her. She gave her to me. And unfortunately, the same neighbor that gave her to me accidentally ran over July the 3rd. And she gave me Emily. So, because she felt bad about Sandy and stuff. And I miss Sandy every single day, y'all. She was my baby, y'all. But Emily, she's my baby too now. I just, I love my animals. So that's my animals. What show or movie do you rewatch? Any of the NCISs, Law and Orders, um, SWAT, Chicago PD, Chicago Med. I could watch those over and over and over again. How do you recharge? If it's recharging my entire body by rest. If it's me just needing to recharge my brain, I come in here surrounded by all this yarny goodness, all my books, and I either crochet or go through my books and I find something to make. What is your number 10? What is your favorite way to travel? The only way out of my entire life of 50 years that I have ever traveled. By car or truck. Never ever have I been on a plane. Never. So, I've always said the only way I get on a plane is it's a life or death situation. And the plane will get me there faster. But depending on where I'm going, I might get there faster by car. So, yeah, by vehicle. Number 11, do or did you have a nickname? Um, well, my husband and I have, we have pet names for each other. <laughs> what I call pet names. But growing up, my granddaddy would call me Beck because of my middle name. And my uncle would call me Kool-Aid because I had a smile. And I smiled all the time. I still have the smile, y'all. I had a smile. I still have the smile. Um, he would tell me that I reminded him of the little Kool-Aid guy that used to come on the commercials. And the way that he smiled. So, yeah. Number 12, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'd have to be an extrovert because I don't meet strangers. And now prior to me um, working with the public and becoming a nurse and stuff, I was an introvert. I really didn't, it, I really don't associate a lot with people, but I will talk to anyone. <laughs> And if you ever ask my husband, he'll tell you I'll talk to a light pole if it'll talk back. 
<laughs> Number 13. What was your first official job? Y'all, I was born and raised in Louisiana. We was always surrounded by cotton fields. And my first official job was hoeing cotton during the summertime. Yes, with an actual hoe. You go out there and you cut down the weeds and the cotton. And you did it from about 5 a.m. till right at noontime when the hottest part of the day started coming in. I actually got a physical check. Um, Now, if you're meaning my first official job from a brick and mortar store, it would have been at a convenience store as a cashier. A local, one of our local stores where I grew up at. But yes, hoeing cotton during the summertime, and then during cotton picking time, we were I would trunk trailers, and that meant climbing into the trailers where they dumped the cotton from the cotton pickers and stomping it down with our feet and stuff, packing it really so they could get more into the trailer. They actually done that, and one of them caught on fire. They it does happen. So, number fourteen. If money was no object, how would you spend your day? Crocheting. Whether I... Poor as I don't know what, or rich as I don't know what. Crocheting. Um, I, I mean, I need money because you got to have it to survive. And you got to have it to buy things. But other than that, crocheting. What I want to do every day, all day. Um, number 15, if you become the ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you passed? Hmm. That one's tough, y'all, because I can think of quite a few. Hmm. But I don't know if those would be appropriate to say on here. That one I'm not going to answer. Because, um... Let me let me let me ponder on that one for a second, y'all. I'll be back. Okay, let's get back to number fifteen. If you become the ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you pass? That each and every one of us be treated the exact same way, regardless of what we look like, regardless of who we're affiliated with, regardless of our religion, our nationality, our race, anything, we would all be treated the exact same way. And what I mean by that is we would all have the same rights, all have the ability, not the ability, but all have access to the same benefits and Everything else that is offered to everyone else. No, no discrimination for any reason whatsoever. Finally, number 16. Name something you are proud of. I know most of y'all don't know this. I, no, I'm not going to start off with that. The first thing that I'm proud of is all six of my children. I'm very proud of them. I don't care. They may not be living their life the way they was raised, but I still love them. And my love will never waver for my children. I don't care what they do. I will always love them unconditionally. Do I agree with everything that they do? No, I do not. Do I 
condone everything that they do? No, I do not. Do I get on their tail now? Even though all of them are grown, you darn skippy I do. Um, do I give them guidance and help? Yes, I do. That's what a parent is supposed to do. But I am very proud of my children. And I'm also proud of every last one of my grandchildren. Also, this is what y'all may not know. I was a high school dropout. I met my husband that I have now. And I went back to school. I got my GED. And I went from there and took business technology. And then I went into nursing school and became a nurse. Um, I went back to school and got a degree, uh, associate's degree in business administration. And I am proud of my education. I really am. I am also proud we own a trucking company. Um, that was always my husband's dream, which became my dream. And we worked together to make it happen. Um, and I am very proud of him. We have been together 26 years we'll be married 25 this november and yeah there's a lot to be proud of y'all um and you know it's just i'm proud that i have the ability to be creative the way that i am to be able to crochet you know because there's people that's tried it and can't grasp it and can't get it, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm just proud of a lot of things, y'all. All right, um, I'm going to leave this open. If you want to do this, do it. If you don't, don't. But I'm not going to tag any particular person to do this or anything like that. So, hey, if you want to do it, join us. Let us get to know you a little bit more on the non-yarny side. Now, I know this said non-yarny, but I mean, number 14, that's a no-brainer. If money was no object, how would you spend your day? Crocheting. Nothing else. I don't care about going on vacation no more. I don't care about doing none of that other stuff because guess what? I got everything I want and need right here at my house. And I got everything in here that brings me pleasure. So, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, everyone. This is it for today. Remember, it's Monday, y'all. We've already had the live. But I'll see y'all in the next video. Until then, be kind. Remember to smile. Know that I love each and every one of you all. And I really do value our friendship that we have built here on these YouTube streets. And I will see y'all in the next video. But until then, crochet in one hand, hook in the other, and crochet all day. Which is what I would like to do. Regardless of how much money I have or don't have. Bye, y'all.